Hello, Ben. Hello, Sam. How are you? I'm good, thanks, mate. I'm good. I'm well. Yeah. Amazing. In these uh, rather unconventional of times, we're both doing this interview via Zoom instead of actually face to face. How have you been? Um, how have I been? I've been I've been well, you know, as well as as well as one can be during this time, trying to be, you know, trying to see the positives and use yes. the time productive. What about yourself? How have you been? Yeah, I've been good. I've been good. It's an interesting time because you do kind of adjust to doing things like this and Zoom has suddenly become the platform that we all know and love. The amount of quizzes I've done over Zoom over lockdown, my God. Was it the yeah. same for you? Yeah, yeah. I'm not a massive fan of them, to be no, honest. No, me I neither. I, I wasn't from the start, really, but it's all, all you had, so you kind yeah. of clung to it. Did I, I, I had a poker night as well. I enjoyed that. I had a, a Zoom poker night once a yeah. week. That was good fun. I had, mate, now, but yeah. I, I had a mate who was obsessed with them and he would want to do them two times a week. And I was like, oh, by, by the end, it was like I'd heard the same question at least four times. So it made it look like I was a genius. So anyway. He, was he right in the quiz? Was he yes. the quiz master? He, he, he was the quiz master twice a week. You, you'd, think, right. you'd think he would run out of questions. No, <laughs> no. Well, I'm sure he learned a lot. He's probably, you should go on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, and ben, of course, the reason we are chatting today is not about my uh, quizzing experience or your lovely poker nights. Um, we're chatting about Pixie. Now, I watched the film yesterday. Incredible. It, I, I, I was hooked from the opening, um, and, and that says a lot to me about what makes a good film. Um, so to somebody who has no idea, what is Pixie all about? Um, Pixie is about these three people in their mid twenties mm -hmm. in a small town in Ireland called Sligo. It's not that small, but uh, uh, Sligo. And they stumble upon a big old bag of drugs uh, of MDMA. And they see it as their opportunity to make a shitload of money and, uh, and get the hell out of Sligo. Mm -hmm. um, the one caveat being is they're being chased by deadly Irish gangster priests. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the kind of premise in a nutshell, but I always like to kind of, think of it as kind of a Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid meets in Bruges. It's kind of, it's a bit of a Irish Western. It's hopefully it's funny. I hope you had a few laughs when you yeah, watched yeah, it. Yeah, and, um, it's, you know, it's like, it's lighthearted fun, you know, and I really hope that especially in this, this trying time that people can sit down for, for a little bit of time and, and watch it and, and it can put a smile on their face for a day. So was it the humor that drew you to the project initially or was it the, the, the script or, or why, why did you want to be involved in Pixie? Um, largely the script. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect reading the script. I thought it was brilliant. I, Preston, I think, is a great writer, Preston Thompson. Um, mm -hmm. But he's fairly, you know, just kind of starting out. He'd written one script before. Um, but I thought the script was just hilarious. It just had me from, from the first page and I just zipped through it. Um, also, the director, Barnaby Thompson, a uh, fan of his work that he's produced and also directed. I'm a fan of St. Trinian's, which he co-directed. and um, So that really kind of drew me to the project. I was just terrified about doing an Irish accent. That was the one thing one thing holding me back. But um, that was my biggest concern going into it. Well, well uh, that was going to be one of my next questions, actually. So did you have like vocal training to actually perfect the Irish accent? Or how, how did you go about creating that voice? Uh, I, yeah, I work with a great dialect coach called Nick Trumbull, who mm -hmm. um, is brilliant. And, um, and, I, and he put me onto, and I'd already kind of found in myself, uh, Kian from Westlife. I've spent, I could, I, could, <laughs> I could recount to you, yeah, numerous uh, Kian Egan interviews from Westlife. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I kind of was listening to him. I'd listened to him on set before, before going on as well. And sometimes I'd dip in and out of the accents, day in and out. But yeah, we had a great dialect coach and a lot of listening and a lot of practice and hopefully it's all right. I'm sure there's some people in Ireland that might disagree and I'm sorry. I'm sorry if they do, but I did my bloody best. I swear. Tell yeah. me about it. I'm from Wales. And when any, whenever anyone does a Welsh accent on screen, I'm like, Oh nah, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm the same. I'm the same with English accents. When Americans do English accents on yeah. screen, it could, be, it could be brilliant. And even still, I'd probably pick at it, but it's unfair really. So yeah, anyway. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But um, for you, Ben, your career just seems to have gone from strength to strength to strength. Um, what, what was it like making a, a project like Pixie, which is a, a smaller independent project in comparison to something like X-Men Apocalypse or uh, the mammoth film that was Bohemian Rhapsody? Right. Um, what was it like? I mean, I've done independent, you know, uh, I did an independent film before, but no, it was um, 
definitely smaller scale, but something like X-Men, you know, I wasn't involved that much. I was, and I had a great, great time. And that thing was crazy, you know, it was a yeah, yeah, yeah. $50 million movie. So it just, it was crazy. So it was, I, I suppose the difference was just, I was so heavily involved every day, which was, which was great, you know, and I love to be working and I was working all the time. And the pace of it was quite fast because it had to be because, you know, it's an independent movie, mm. um, but that kind of adds an energy as well at the same, at the same time. So, um, no, I, I found it. A, and also just with the, with that, that script, it was just, it was just a load of fun. We had a load of fun. The three of us just had a great time every day on, on camera and off camera, you know, it was a very mm. open and free set just to play around and have fun. So we had a great time. Without giving too much away, um, tell us more about your character. Uh, so I play Frank. And Frank is, considers himself a bit of a wild man. He considers himself a bit of a loose cannon. Um, I always I envisage him as the guy that was kind of king of the king of the school when he was seventeen, eighteen, mm. uh, maybe captain of the football team, and and thought he was going to go and play in the Premier League, maybe. But then it didn't quite happen. And now <laughs> we all had one. We all had one in our school. I am not that yeah. guy. <laughs> no, no, but. Uh, yeah, and then it didn't quite happen. Now he's in his mid-20s and he wants to get out of the small town in, uh, in Ireland that he's from. Mm -hmm. um, and he sees this opportunity when they stumble upon this big old stash of drugs and, um, and just runs with it and just goes with it. But he's very kind of... I had a lot of fun playing him because he's, he's probably... Well, he's very insecure, but he's just puts on this kind of bravado and thinks he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying, to act, trying to act like the big man, but really he's just desperate to get out of Sligo and... Um, but yeah, he was a really fun character for me to play. Yeah, um, and, and without further ado, Ben, um, I've, I've got some quick fire questions which I've prepared um, right. and, and some of your lovely fans have sent them in as well. Um, okay. So the first one comes from somebody called, and I don't think this is their real name, but Ben Hardy Stan. <laughs> um, oh, right. It's an interesting choice of uh, name. Um, describe your character in three words. Uh, wild, free, um, Mm, insecure there you go there you go nice, nice. Yeah. um and then somebody called it's a metaphor joe has said what was your favorite scene to film in the film without giving too much away oh um my favorite scene to film was the uh without giving too much away it's hard oh God, well, it's i, hard. I didn't I tell them that bit, but people just sending questions I don't I know. see it. <laughs> I quick, I'm supposed to be quick firing here. I tell you, what, I'll give, it's not my favourite scene to film because I don't want to give anything away. But I really enjoyed. We were filming in this. Oh, actually, no, it was great. I got to drive this old Mercedes on the beach. Yeah. So there, you go. that was that was wow. great fun. I was also doing dialogue, and there was drone cameras filming it. And I was spinning this car around on the beach. So that was great fun. Yeah. Uh, Jay Galicia, Galicia, I think. Uh, who as an actor do you look up to? Um, I mean, there's so many. There's yeah. so many. Really, there's so many. Uh, I don't want to name one. I'm not going to name one. No, don't, don't name one. Don't name so, one. I don't want to single someone out. No, of course. And, and just finally, which is a really good, good question, actually. Um, Cherry Barber Mansell has said, what is your favourite historical era that you have filmed in? I have filmed in the historical era, I suppose, tempted to say somewhere further back, like the 19th century. But I actually... My favourite era of filming was in the 70s on Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. That was fun, which is yeah. historical. Not that long ago, but historical enough. Definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, well, Ben, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to chat to me. Um, from all of us, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Cheers.